Hi, welcome to Overlanding from Home. My name is Anton. I'm an avid overlander, lover of nature, and humanitarian by heart. The past while, I've always been interested in the outdoors, and I want to hear about other people's experiences and their rigs. Yes, the big rigs, the small rigs, everything they've done to design them and how they plan it. I hope you enjoy listening. Let's find out who today's guest is. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you again uh, for signing in and listening to these pretty cool podcasts from home. I hope you guys are safe and things are lightening up in the country that you're listening to. And don't forget, you can listen to these podcasts on all the media platforms. Uh, they are put out there for anyone to listen to, and they are kid friendly. So don't feel obliged to let your little ones listen in and uh, maybe enjoy what you're hearing. And today, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a, a very, very gnarly chat. I have Becca from Russia. He's uh, stuck um, in a bit of a lockdown like the rest of us, and um, he has an amazing page. Um, spoke to him today for the first time, and uh, if you go onto his channels, and the links will be below, I'm pretty sure you're going to find some amazing stuff. But when you listen to this, it's going to make it so much more sense when you watch some of the videos. So, Becca, thank you very much for signing in and having this chat with me. Thank you for finding me. How you find me? My is the first question. Oh, um, so I follow the hashtag overlanding and, uh, mm -hmm. you were, you, you put that hashtag in and, uh, it came up and I was like, Oh, what's this about? And I saw a post of you sitting on your, on your window, uh, on your car door window, uh, <laughs> stuck. So it was quite, it was quite interesting. And I was like, no way is this, this sounds gnarly. So <laughs> I went in, yeah, I went in and, 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 and had a squeeze and sent you a note and you uh, gratefully responded. Yeah. It was fun sitting on my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I got the dogs barking outside. So don't be distracted about that uh, folks. So, um, Becca, I honestly don't know where to start. I think the number one, tell me about your rig. You know, uh, tell me. In fact, no, no, I don't want to start there. Tell me what is it about overlanding and going into the wild bush that got you to climb in your vehicle and make it the way that it is? What is it that you really that that really excites you? Well, actually, I have to start about the um, concept of uh, my overlanding and how actually i was uh, coming to this concept for since 2015 when i bought the land cruiser i own land cruiser 18 uh, diesel with automatic transmission and okay it, it now, uh, all, all already was on 36 uh, inch tires and uh, with uh, all uh, differential logs I mean, it was type of uh, expedition car like to travel anywhere as you know russia is quite a big country so you can drive one way like twelve thousand kilometers and it still will be russia <laughs> yeah not so uh... yeah yeah but my goal was like travel around the st Petersburg. we have uh, here mostly swampy terrain and when I actually have started to travel, it's to travel is like not quite a sufficient word because uh, travel is about like to live for for a week for me. Yes. I like to leave uh, in the early morning and return the same day or return the next day. This is this this is a travel for me because uh, then you have a weekdays to work and we have off days to like enjoy uh, so the okay. my ground clearance uh, finished very quickly because the ground is very soft and the the eclipse uh, ground clearance was like 28 centimeters and it, it, it is finished quite a, a fast because the car is heavy it was uh, before i've made changes like two and eight tone Yes, and, uh, I have a. I had a friend uh, with different modification, with bigger tires, and of course, I have started to think what to do, what to change. And the long story short, actually, on my channel YouTube, I have a video. Unfortunately, it's only on the Russian language without English captions. Maybe auto translate will help somebody. 
But I was thinking about the two year what to do and planning to convert my car in more convenient to, to conquer these roads. And the idea was to add the portal axles from Volvo 303. Uh, this is okay. the car was uh, manufactured during the Cold War in 1975. And the main point of this car is that they have a portal axles and the ground clearance with uh, 34 inch tires, it is a, a 38 centimeter. So finally, now, not long story short, is like I have uh, 42 inch tires on it. And this is a not usual <laughs> tire. This is a tire from Tractor. And, that's crazy in itself yeah, and i'm sorry yeah. to in 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 interrupt you there but i mean that's that that conversion alone um creates a number of other problems i think you know um not not only the wheel arch being number one articulation number two engine power number three you know that's a that's a lot to to move around um and then especially in the swamp areas now looking at some of your videos it's just it's crazy that you're going into some of these big areas. Have you modified the engine much? Well, actually, uh, the the old question, actually, I was thinking about two years because I am too, how to say, I don't like much risk, but if you see my videos, you can't say so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I want to plan everything to be planned, and I have so many thoughts about this. So um, that's why it took two years to plan. So actually everything went smooth because I have left the original suspension. I have not modified anything. Uh, the four inch lift, I had to run my 36 inch tires with stock axles. They actually left the same. Because of okay. the portal axles, I can fit a 42 inch without any additional inch from this four inch I had initially. Uh, so uh, also I can uh, run like 100 kilometers on the like rally driving. I mean on um, actually not not uh, the perfect terrain. So about the stability of the suspension, yes, it's stable. Uh, for driving on the usual road, like paved road, it's like same speed, like 95, 100 kilometer. And yeah. I'm limited to this speed because of several moments. First is the, actually the portal axles shouldn't run more because um, uh, gears above the 100 kilometers are... Uh, um, looped not so good as uh, below this speed this is according to instruction manual from this car world war 303 uh, there are some people who run on the higher speeds but actually maybe it costs to more uh, worn of details uh, extra damage we don't know but i'm limited yes. the second moment is because when you um, when you are adjusting the tractor tires you need the proper rims and you need only not the proper rims you need rims with a, a double bedlock because yes you will be able to as i have a central uh, compression and i have a central tire inflation system uh, you shouldn't think about uh, will you the tire will you uh, try to remove from your rim or about all this stuff so you need the double bedlock so the configuration is that this tractor tire rim is 20 inches and there is no tires with 20 inch uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, double bedlock. So we made, uh, we have a handmade rim actually and the handmade rim is not uh, as uh, straight as it could be. I mean, when you... Sure. Um, uh, put it in the special. Uh, um, I can't say exactly in English, but you know when you took your tire to balance in the tire shop, 
yes. it could be balanced well because uh, first the rims are not straight and second tire itself tractor tires actually they shouldn't run this speed the limit of this tire is 40 kilometers per hour wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are not allowed to run this speed but the difference with the tractor we have less weight like they the the load on each tire could should be like uh 1400 kilogram uh, while yes. we uh, low our load is much less like about uh uh, 700 kilogram or 800 kilogram on tire. So this saves our lives, say so. <laughs> on yeah, running on high speed. Yeah. That's uh, crazy, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, no changes with the engine because uh, when you put the uh, portal axles, you get the extra uh, gear ratio. You uh, Like before, it was like four. 0.88 uh, and now it's uh, 6.0 so you have additional gearing low down so even in high speeds uh, there is no problem i have minor changes on my uh, low uh, low range like it, uh, from a um, factory from toyota it comes to uh, it comes 2.488 and now it's like 3.11, plus 25%. This is the only change I have made in transmission. There is, this is a stock engine. This is a stock uh, automatic transmission. And everything is stock. That's why I love uh, Land Cruiser 18, because you take uh, the stock car, remove the axles, adding uh, portal axles, tractor tires, and you have a beast. Like you can drive... You can sleep in the car. We you can carry a lot of load because um, uh, we have portable uh, everything. Like we can fix ourselves. And in during these years of traveling this way, I had a situation when I needed the evacuation. Like because of something has gone so bad, I can fix it with my own. So yes. the, this is because of the ability to carry. Now our weight is like 3.2 ton. It's too much. It's really too much. We had a competition here. This is very famous, world's most uh, big, uh, as they call, uh, for the competition, Ladoga Trophy. Yes. Uh, they, they are running for 23 years, I think. And in, last, uh, in 2019, we made, uh, I was participating in this trophy and I took the third place. Uh, and on my category, and um, at, at the competition time, our weight was two and eight ton, like four hundred kilogram less. Yes. Uh, and, and now we still, our weight still grow uh, to three and two tons back because we add some more extra for like saving our lives in a hard situation on competition. You can throw out from the car a lot of things because you ha- you should like run only. This, uh, a special stage and come to the base where you can fix your car, etc. So, yes. uh, of course, this is too much, and our tires are not so huge to handle the swamp. But we are struggling some place somewhere. We are like it's not like swamp rider. No, no, no. But no. some some point you can anyway cross them. It's okay. I've seen I've seen some of the amazing machines that have come out from Russia, like that Swamp Rider machine that goes on pretty much everything. And uh, you know, looking at your tires, they they're definitely going to get you out of a situation. Unless, like now, I'm looking at the one that you uploaded on the first of June uh, this year, and uh, you were completely bogged down on your left hand side, you know, right under water. Um, and uh, it's just a, it's it's it's. Yeah, it's I'm statuing because it, it's not normal for like a overlanding, for example. But you know, <laughs> earlier when I when I spoke with you for the first time, we were talking about maps, um, and uh, I know that the Russians uh, did mapping uh, in HD um, for 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 many many years in the beginning with satellites, and and you guys have amazing quality and mapping. Now, you you pretty much decide on a route that you want to go. Um, 
just because and like no one's driven it before or you think that it's a way to go that's going to give you some more action well uh, about the map a little note like we are using soviet maps it's a topographic map made early in the 1670s 80s uh actually what, the usefulness of this map is you see if there were any 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 the times before the road because uh, most time you find the old road. Of course, we cannot uh, go through the forest if there were no roads, because yes. we are not uh, happy to uh, uh, saw the trees down and make new roads. No, uh, I uh, we are like nature friendly about all this stuff. So we like yes. to conquer the roads that already maybe someone someone uh, have driven, and usually it is. Uh, the guys who are actually professionally saw the tre- trees, the forest, and selling this stuff. Yes. So the they when they are uh, actually carrying those for uh, forest uh, from uh, the place they have. Uh, so they are leaving uh, huge huge traces, and uh, the ground clearance to conquer this road is. To be like 30, 80, 40 centimeters. Uh, because what do they, they normally uh, use? Which vehicle do they and, um, normally well, use? They, they use the, the, the popular car in Russia. It's the, the name is uh, with huge tires and loaded with the trees. Uh, they are so uh, also the, another disaster for me because my ground clearance is forty eight centimeters, like near near half meter. But yes. there is the, the crazy technique like. We called it uh, for Forester. <laughs> like the ground clearance starts from 16 to 18 centimeters. In the wide of uh, the tires could be, not tires, but like play uh, the points uh, from the one tire from another tire, they could change, like uh, go inside and go out. Yes. And when they leave uh, the trace, like uh, here, the clearance unit 16 centimeters, we are unable to like uh, draw directly so we have or, or we are driving over left side or from the right side uh so yeah sometimes they are doing for, uh, very very interesting roads for us this is a one part second part it could be like old abandoned uh, uh, village road somewhere sometime and as uh, the road terrain is much swampy uh you need you may like only 100 meters on 50. You can like live on uh, 50 meters the like, whole day. Like enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> your I can believe that. Yeah, I well, can believe that. It was this, with this uh, the moment of flying car on the one his side. We've spent there for about six hours. Just and and we are not we we are not chilling. Like six hours we are working to take this car from this. Uh, stuck moment on the <laughs> on <the> horizontal yeah. <laughs> surface. That stuff's very thick, man. <clears throat> so sometimes we uh, sometimes we're exploring because if uh, on terrain there is no tree, nothing, you're, you're just cruising. Sometimes, as you, as as uh, near the Saint Petersburg, uh, so much have happened during uh, Second World War. We have many. Um, like abandoned tanks, uh, ab- abandoned uh, war places uh, with uh, diff- different type of uh, buildings. Uh, like uh, around the Saint Petersburg, like it's like s- tons of uh, people have died, and the tanks and the planes. Uh, uh, so sometimes, like yeah, you are driving, and you see oh, like mine, <laughs> or you see somebody's uh, helmet. Really, it's, it's yeah, it's it's sad story, but it is a part of the life we see here. And sometimes you can drive to this type of uh, places if they are very remote and hard to reach. You can uh, like take maps. You can check these maps, and these Soviet maps uh, help to see uh, this type of roads. And next. Continuing about the maps, uh, then we use uh, usually like uh, Google uh, satellites, Bing satellites, and local Yandex satellites. Uh, the software we use, uh, we run actually tablet like Explore. It's a brand. 
Mm, yes. Now uh, the the name of this company is Zebra, if I re remember correctly. So uh, it runs Windows actually, and we run the uh, software Zinc Navigation, and we uh, are preloading those maps while we have a normal internet, home, and Wi-Fi. And uh, if you can quickly change from the like from one type of map to another. So you are uh, sitting on the one spot and you're quickly changing and zooming in, zooming out to understand where are you on the on different types of satellite maps you see differently because on some of them it could be like cloudy and on another is a, a shot on the one uh, time of the day on and another type it could be shot on the sunset and when you when the picture is shot on the sunset, actually you see hill shades and the image looks like more 3D, it's like more volume. Like uh, uh, So it's very cool to have a three different satellite maps and uh, quickly changing from them. Uh, so it's this amazing. I mean, I, I, use a, um, I use a iPad mini and I put all yeah. the maps onto the iPad mini because um i just find it you know like you a lot more convenient and i've just seen a brief picture i think of the map that you of the system that you're using um in between you throwing snakes and frogs out of the back of your vehicle when you uh, <laughs> when you finally got out of that hole yeah. um yeah. it it's uh, it looks pretty in in interesting i mean i i have a i, uh, I have a garmin inreach mini which is a tracking device um yeah. and i connect that with the ipad uh, mini so that I can uh, track myself wherever I go because some of the villages I go to are not on maps um, and there's not there's like more of a path than a road so I need to find it correctly and I can't generally find it unless I get coordinates so I completely understand um, you know like what you're going through and I think it's fascinating um, in Russia with the history and the culture exactly like what you're saying you know you you'll be driving along and see a tank and there's so much stories behind all of that i think it's amazing and, and you know does that excite you getting that sort of culture and the, and those type of stories seeing a helmet on the side do you i mean what is the what is the, the 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 most fascinating thing that you've come across um while going on, on well about this moment actually um i'm trying to be a side of it on what part like of course i appreciate those people who made uh, the piece and now we can able we are able to touch uh, talk with uh, with uh, to chat like yes. <laughs> with this and with uh, this situation uh, and, uh, um, there are so many places you can specially drive for this but we are not driving for this but anyway like just only surfing on this type of terrain you are forcing. The, uh, we are planning, uh, actually, the, the interesting place is like when from the ground, uh, the half tank is uh, under the uh, swamp and the half is stuck up, like yes. something like this. Uh, we are only planning to drive there. Um, mostly because of the swamp, everything uh, from the, the war, it is down. Like you should dig for this. Okay. But, uh, sometimes you see uh, when you drive on the swamp. For example, we have a region uh, like uh, 40 kilometers or 50 from St. Petersburg, the place where we love to off-road, doing off-road. Yeah. And actually, we are driving through uh, bomb, bomb, where, where, where the explosion bomb made, uh, and it, it's doing like round, huge uh, uh, place where, <laughs> where from the years, the leaves from trees and ground were like falling, falling, falling. And you see like, oh, it's a usual road, usual terrain. I will like, will drive through. Mm. and. <laughs> You're driving through it, and you're going on the, in the ground. Uh, and usually, our ground clearance and uh, tire size is enough to pass everything. 
Okay. But uh, as this is uh, from the explosion, they are so deep. They could like be the two meters deep, three meters deep. And this is crazy. Like you wow. didn't expect. And in, in, the, in the end of the day, you realize that you just drive through the place where was like exactly war. And like you were actually driving through these explosions because uh, uh, like two hours you, you were on your left back of the car, then you was on the right because you were driving in the middle of these uh, explosion places. Yeah. Um, you you may not see anything like helmet or something like this, but realizing that actually this is not uh, 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 this is not uh, nature made. This is human made. This yeah. um, what is starting you think because. Uh, when you are stuck on this car and, and uh, you realize so actually people were, uh, maybe he was like hiding in this uh, hole from somebody. And uh, some, in some places where there is no swamp, you can see actually since two world war, like all the, I actually don't, doesn't remember the word in English, but you know, when uh, you are, uh, preparing for enemy, like you yes. digging the place uh, to uh, like a, like uh, a like, dugout. Yeah, yeah, to defense, and you see, like you see all the uh, stuff, and you see the like um, uh, pieces of the machine, pieces of the tank, uh, uh, maybe from explosion, maybe because they just abandoned this uh, transport and the, what's it's left from. From that time, uh, the, because mostly everything is uh, uh, under the ground because of the swamp. So that's why they are finding so many things in good condition. Because swamp is they, it, 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 there is no oxygen there. So yes. uh, the, the process is stopped actually. So, so when it, they found something, if they if they have managed to pull it from the swamp, it's in very very good condition. That's amazing, hey. You know, it's it's something that I've never experienced. Uh, or my father, for example, my 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 grandparents, much like yours, would have experienced this obviously firsthand. But you know, it's just it's it's a it's a it, it's amazing to to have that scenario. I mean, obviously for us in Africa, it's quite different. Uh, we we do have terrorism, which is current, and and issues which are current, but um, nothing on the scale. Uh, of what you're dealing with anyway back to back to your scenario so so because you 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 only go out for one maybe two days you you don't carry a uh, a camping fridge right or do you carry a fridge no 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 we don't because um uh, there is no need like yes. we usually carry uh <coughs> Uh, like, I'm not like a cooler box in, in English, but you know, special um, thing you can open and uh, b- not boil, but like heat up on the fire. And yes, we have like a, a gas stove. Uh, huh? Like a stove and kettle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's like boil in the water, throw down uh, uh, like uh, rice or something like this and mix yes. them and you okay. And maybe sometimes I'm, I'm carrying the raw fish or raw meat to make in the evening barbecue. Uh, like, um, why not? Like, it's it's night, it's cold, it's stars up stars, and so you 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 can cook. So no, we we don't. Um, also, because uh, it's uh, it's quite cold in the evening. It's like plus five, plus ten. Uh, so meat. It's okay, like you can carry it till the end of the day. So when the in the evening you are cooking, it's fine. Yeah, it's um, it's you know everyone's scenarios is is very different. Um, and, and I just I I look at the way that you do it, and you've you've obviously rigged up your vehicle for for four by fouring um with a little bit of of overlanding to get to certain places, and it's it it definitely works very well for you. I mean that the vehicle that that you have now would never work well within Africa because some of the different distances are very far. So, you know, for me, for example, to get to Namibia from Cape Town or get to Botswana, 
um, from Cape Town is like a one and a half days drive. You know, it's uh, uh, driving for 10 hours, staying over somewhere, then finishing off the drive the next day. So, you know, we we complete have everything. I mean, we have deep cycle batteries, lights, rooftop tent, all that type of stuff. So for us, it's a, it's a very different scenario. Um, and it's uh, it makes it quite a quite a logistical challenge. It's it's obviously a lot simpler for you than it is for us. You don't have to worry about uh, carrying extra food and bits and pieces. Now, you've you've obviously spent quite a bit of money on your vehicle. Are you uh, are you married? Do you have kids? I have kid. Okay. Do they come out with you? Uh yes, uh, when it's possible. Sure. He Wonderful. Loves it. Wonderful. Is he a boy or a girl? How old is he or her? Boy. Boy, he is nine. Ah, oh, lovely man. This is a perfect scenario where um, you know, for, for him. I also see you've got a buddy that goes with you quite a bit. Is that uh has has he helped you build your vehicle? Uh, well, he, the time uh, we were traveling together, he was not much able because, uh, the problem is when you're traveling with your kid, you should, uh, watch your boat because of this swamp. Like yes. he, he is on the surface and now he is not. So you even can see he, he can like, uh, <laughs> uh, dive in the swamp so quickly. You even don't notice it, notice. And uh, he can even don't call like not manage to call it because it was too quick so i'm trying when i'm uh, traveling with him in these uh, scenarios like pay attention to him it's not about uh, making video it's not about like just more about the barbecue moment yes, uh, yes. It's, it's very dangerous in this moment so <laughs> uh, I, i'm not sure about his health right now but maybe we will will grow more and will be more taller <laughs> yes. then it will be fine about the different preparation and you're talking about yes sure uh, we have different challenges and uh, uh, if I additionally equip my car with uh, the stuff you attend like extra water extra food and all this stuff it will be like <laughs> maybe one two or three hundred kilo kilograms more and uh, there is actually no room left for this and the uh, second uh, when you like go under the water one uh, we sometimes are crossing rivers with one meter and seven uh one meter and 17 uh, so uh, the entire car is fluted yeah like, like i'm sitting and i'm driving i'm sitting in the water so our car is uh, because of tire in portals is is quite quite he's standing quite high. So even uh, when you're driving this water, everything is floating up. So you need everything to be waterproof. So not all this stuff could be waterproof. <laughs> so this is another challenge. Well, like you can you want to carry like fridge, but yeah. fridge should be. Waterproof, and so for example, we are carrying saw, uh, like uh, electric motor. Uh, I mean, to to cut trees. Sometimes it's underwater, and that's where we are doing like uh, exploding it, like taking every piece from it, uh, mm -hmm. unplugging and making dry and uh, uh, rebuilding again. Or we are carrying with us portable. Um, welding machine yeah really <laughs> yeah really it's wow. portable uh, it's it works from uh, 24 12 or 24 volt and it's it, that's why we can like save ourselves sometimes uh, the, the, um, uh, usually uh, break something in steering uh, and uh, steering we are welding steering uh, links together and wow. um, this is this is a fully electrical. It couldn't, shouldn't go on the water, but sometimes even it could be there. Yeah. So yes, we have different types of off-road. It's at, as I call it's an extreme expedition of uh, from the point of start, not more than two hundred kilometers because it's hard to drive so much. It's like we we have no um, 
insulation, nothing like you. you hear everything. You hear your engine running, you hear the tractor tires running, everything like so loud. It's too loud in the city, in the car. So it's not about the comfort, no. So it's not expedition. It's like hardcore expedition for two days. And these two days is feeding you next next uh, week and even sometimes next two weeks because it was too much this to too concentrate these two days. So no, next week no, I will pass and maybe after two weeks I will go there again. So it's like mean I I, I call it mini vacation. Really, yeah. it's totally different. Like you're surviving, you're on the nature. The only thing you think is how to survive, how to make the challenge, how to sometimes maybe weld something, how to fix with a small amount of uh, different stuff you carry with you. The, yeah. uh, as a uh, current problem, because um, sometimes uh, it's not about like a gener generator belt. It's more complicated and you should solve because can, no one can help you. You're in the middle of a swamp. <laughs> so it's challenging and it's about to survive while the city life is about like Excel tables and, you know, like this stuff. Well, that, that, I, think, I, I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to ask you one more last, last, last question is that, you know, you've obviously, like you've said, it took you two years to, um, to develop and design the vehicle that you're wanting to use it. Now, if you were to get into serious trouble, uh, besides hiking and walking out, I mean, who would be able, who would you call? Um, that's a whole nother problem. You know, it, it, not, not many people would be able to cope. Would you call the, the forestry guys to come in and, and help get you? Or, or would you just leave your vehicle and walk out and, and, uh, and, and let it sit down? <laughs> well, it's, it's a very good question, actually, because, uh, uh, it's a problem because uh, when we are stuck uh, and stuck in the way we can help ourselves, um, this is a real big deal uh, for the guy who can uh, who have to help to us. Uh, in our uh, like uh, expedition history, we had uh, this type of uh, moment uh, anyway. But if it will happen, and someday it will happen anyway. Uh, there are commercial companies uh, who are on uh, this heavy recovery. Okay. And like uh, they are driving special cars, special equipped cars. And e e even if they can't uh, like drive to you too close, they uh, can stop for 100 meters, two, or 300, half kilometers and take their ropes and uh, pull it to you like this way. Uh, it could be because uh, um, because of the huge weight of more than three tons, uh, it's not possible to tow this car with usually off uh, usual off road. Even if uh, it could be like second this type of car, it's not possible. So the better way in this situation, if you are broken in this way, you can move. To bring this spare part to pick the car and drive back with your own forces. So, like you are just pulling to somebody who will drive to near road, and you are walking to this road, jumping, driving to the city, buying the necessary items, come back, fix and go. Okay. I think this scenario is more work. Well, sounds like you could create your own uh, recovery team. And and Becca, listen, I really appreciate the chat. It's as I thought, it's crazy, man. I mean, tractor tires, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a different level, but understanding why you can only go for one or two days, um, it's a whole different kettle of fish. And I'm sure by the time you get home, you sleep very well after six hours in one spot digging yourself out. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would completely break someone's back. Um, and I'm pretty sure only a Russian could do it. So listen, blessings to you, my friend, and uh, I'll definitely keep in touch. And uh, I look forward to watching more of your videos. They are in Russian, unfortunately, folks, but uh, very, very cool to watch the way that uh, it's been put together. Uh, to let you know, Becca is a photographer, so his quality of video is really good. Um, his pictures on Instagram are really, really good. So please go and follow his channels. 
Um, and Becca, listen, I, I really um, appreciate the time that you've given me. And, uh, uh, you know, we've spoken a little bit about everything, big tires, culture, the war, um, why you do it. Um, it's incredible. You're very mindful and thoughtful about what you're doing. And I really appreciate that. And I, I do hope that you stick to doing what you're doing. And uh, um, I really look forward to uh, carrying on following you uh, on your social media. Thank you. Thank you for connecting me. It's my first uh, English speaking experience. <laughs> oh, you did very well. I mean, uh, there were no problems at all. I'm sure the, the listeners understand. So um, besides the dogs barking on my side, which is driving me more nuts, um, you did really well, and and thank you for your time. Um, uh, I'm watching another video of yours now on the you put out on the 25th of May, um, where there there it's just not really a road. There was a path before. I just <laughs> I love it, completely love it. Anyway, buddy, thank you very much for your time. Have a blessed day during this lockdown, and uh, uh, and stay safe until you get out in the path again. Thank you. Thank you. Go well. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>